Yes. Now we, we are moving on to the topic axillary artery. So we are going to discuss about this topic under introduction. Then origin and cause of axillary artery. Termination. Next will be the parts of axillary artery. Next will be the branches. Next will be the relations of axillary artery. Anastomosis related to axillary artery. Finally will be the applied aspects. Origin and the course. For the origin, just consider this as the first rib. Okay, so first rib. The first rib at the so subclavian artery from the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side. Is continuous subclavian artery comes and at the outer border of the first rib, this is the outer border of the first rib, the subclavian artery is named as axillary artery. Fine. So the subclavian artery is termed as the axillary artery at the level of outer border of the first rib. So how we can write the origin? Origin of the axillary artery. Axillary artery is the continuation of the subclavian artery at the level of outer border or the lateral border of the first rib. It runs outwards, it runs outwards, forwards and laterally to work close to the anterior wall of the axilla. In the previous session we have discussed about the walls of axilla termination. So here there will be the teres major muscle, we know here will be the scapula and here will be the humerus and here and the teres major muscle from the lateral border of the lateral border and the lower, lower surface of the lateral border of the scapula will come and inserts into the medial lip of the bicipital group. Hence this consider this has the okay teres major muscle fine. So at this level this axillary artery. So this axillary artery will continue as the brachial artery. So as we to put together everything, so the axillary artery uh, arises is the continuation of the subclavian artery at the level of outer border of the first rib. It runs downwards, forwards and laterally towards the anterior wall of the axilla till to the to the lower border of the teres major muscle. After that the axillary artery continues as the brachial artery to the arm okay so this is the axillary artery from the outer border of the first strip to the lower border of the teres major muscle this is about the origin course and termination of the axillary artery then so we have finished completed the introduction origin course termination we know that during its travel from the outer border of the first strip to the lower border of the teres major it is crossed here will be the coracoid process okay so here will be the coracoid process of scapula and in the coracoid process we know that pectoralis major muscle okay so the pectoralis major muscle will be inserted so what is this muscle will be the pectoralis minor muscle will be inserted and it divides the axilla into the first part which is medial to it second part which is so second part which is posterior to it and the third part which is lateral to it are okay so the which muscle so this muscle is the teres major muscle which indicates the termination of the axillary artery okay so now we have divided the uh, so the parts of the axillary artery is over so this about this uh, second part so from the first part superior thoracic artery after emerging it supplies the upper part of the pectoral region 
and superior thoracic artery and also it supplies a little part of the mammary gland and if we go for the second part second part it gives the two branches that is the thoracoacromial artery thoracoacromial artery again divides into four branches one for deltoid clavicular pectoral and it one more is the acromion branches okay so acromion deltoid clavicular and the pectoral branches it supplies the respective places and the next one will be the lateral thoracic artery the lateral thoracic artery which runs at the lower border of the pectoralis major muscle pectoral sorry pectoralis minor muscle and it is the important artery that supplies the mammary gland so the artery of mammary gland is the lateral thoracic artery which is a branch from the second part of the axillary artery so together we are putting together everything so the upper limb the artery of the upper limb is the axillary artery and its origin it is the continuation of the subclavian artery so here it is called has subclavian artery and the subclavian artery continues at the outer border of the first rib has the axillary artery and it terminates at the lower border of the teres major muscle at the lower border of the teres major muscle in the muscle and it goes it runs outwards forwards and laterally towards the anterior wall of the axilla and it termination at the lower border of the teres major muscle and the parts it is divided into three parts by the pectoralis minor muscle insert, which is inserted into the coracoid process of the scapula as the first part which is medial to it or above to it now uh, about to it second part behind the pectoralis minor muscle and third part which is lateral to it or below to the pectoralis minor muscle and from the first part it gives the superior thoracic artery from the second part thoracoacromial artery which has deltoid branch acromial branch pectoral branch and the clavicular branch and the later sec from the second part one more branch will be the lateral thoracic artery and from the third part it has the subscapular artery and the which also supplies the serratus anterior along with that anterior circumflex artery and the posterior circumflex artery so these are about the inter about the branches of the axillary artery